The question is whether there is a healthier relationship <laughs> that we can engender with our anxiety. Can we reframe, can we adjust our relationship with anxiety? It's no surprise that we live in a complex world. There's a lot of opportunities for growth and transformation, but there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of change. And that is, of course, interpreted always as potentially dangerous, uncertainty. We are wired to respond to uh, in fight or flight fashion because, hey, there could be a lion around the next uh, rustling bush. Um, so I, I'm a control freak and I definitely have issues with letting go. You know, letting go is, fuck, letting go is the devil to people who have issues with control, right? We're, we're, we tend to be the last ones to partake in spontaneous experience. Um, we hesitate, we second guess, we're overly cautious, we worry about what if something goes wrong, we're relentlessly self-monitoring. How do I feel when I feel this way? Is everything okay? We're always on guard. Somebody once told me that, you know, some people are sheep and some people are uh, wolves or coyotes, right? So the sheeps are blissful, living in the radiance of the sun, uh, ignorant to any potential danger. The wolves or the coyotes, they're on the hunt, they're on the prowl, they're in the moment, they're eating sheep. But then the sheepdog, hey, he gets none of the fun. The sheepdog is terrified, perpetually on guard, hyper vigilant, trembling with a kind of neurotic PTSD, always worried and anxious that some, you know, some wolf is gonna come and eat the sheep. And so control freaks are sheepdogs. And so the question becomes, I mean, it's obvious, how do we alleviate our suffering? Because it really sucks to be anxious and to always desperately want to cling to some feeling of control, which is not to say that there isn't a time and a place to execute control of a situation, right? To, to sort of shrink the world down to size and to assert oneself in it uh, with strength and vitality. There's, a, there's definitely a time for planning, for control, for judiciousness, but letting go in the end, especially for the neurotic and those with a temperament that uh, uh, tends to uh, sort of gravitate towards negative emotion, need uh, uh, sort of regular encounters with surrender because for us it's a kind of cleansing. Anxious people actually feel the best once they're able to get out of their own way and actually let go and actually surrender. Now my approach to this has combined uh, novelty, which usually can be a immediate distraction from myself and a hurling into the moment. See, when I'm in a new environment, for example, the savannas uh, of Africa on safari or riding bicycles in Copenhagen, the sheer newness of the environment uh, is, is, is sort of Pungent, you know, you're, you're sort of you enter a heightened state of consciousness because everything is new, and so you're hurled into the now. You, it's like a, it's like a slip and slide where you you slip into the now and you forget yourself. And so, for control freaks who have issues with letting go, you're essentially tricking yourself into letting go. You're you're sort of staging a mouse trap that will snap you into the moment. And the, the, the mousetrap being, of course, the new environment and potentially combining it with some cannabis. But the point is, once you all of a sudden remember yourself, you come back into yourself, in the last five minutes you lost yourself in the moment, you were in flow, the neurotic mind is like, oh, I survived. Nothing happened. There was nothing to be afraid of. What was I clinging to? What was I so worried about? Why couldn't I release? Why couldn't I let go? <laughs> See, all of that is absolved once you pop out on the other side of the experience of surrender. You come back into yourself and you realize you didn't die by letting down your guard. The act of surrender actually served instead as a cleansing of your anxieties. And once you reemerge on the other side of that bliss fuck crucifixion, as, <laughs> as Jamie Wheel calls it, um, you realize that, <sighs> well, first of all, you experience a sense of relief that you persisted in spite of not being there. Now listen to what I'm saying because people who talk about flow or artistic inspiration or surrendering to the moment, 
talk about how they're not really there in that process. You go beyond yourself. You're in a state of ecstasis. You're beside yourself. The doer and the seer merge. And so what happens is that that inner chatter, that incessant monkey mind, perpetually self-monitoring and always on guard, the voice in your head, the autobiographical mind, the default mode network, the terrible tyrant is temporarily shut down. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and then it, it is forced to accommodate itself, right? Once you pop out on the other side and all systems come back online and you're like, oh shit, I didn't have to be on guard all the time. All that anxiety, all that pent up angst was so fundamentally unnecessary. <sighs> and so my recommendation to all of you out there who deal with issues of control and surrender and letting go and are struggling with anxiety and incessant worry is, Find triggers that hurl you into the moment. Set up conditions, set up triggers that will trick you into forgetting yourself for a while. And, and that's where all the cleansing and catharsis happens because what you realize is that that worrying inner chatter so much of the time is just running uh, ruminative loops, cul-de-sacs and error messages as Jamie Wheel calls them, and they serve no function. Their original intent was to protect us from danger. So be kind to your fear. Say to yourself, okay, fear, okay, anxiety. Thank you for keeping me safe. Now shut the fuck up and let me have some fun. So this is where my interest in flow states and in alter states of consciousness and in novelty travel and exploration comes from. Because when I lose myself in a world of aesthetic experiences, when I lose myself in music, when I lose myself in poetry, when I lose myself in novelty, <laughs> I become free of myself and I am absolved of myself and I experience the amnesis, the moment of I remember what I forgot, hallelujah. And sometimes when I get caught up on busy work in several weeks past and I've had no experience of surrender and letting go, holy shit, my neurosis is like that siren. <laughs> I become a really anxious dude. That's usually when it's like emergency intervention. Get out there, take the plunge, jump into the waterfall. Everything we want is on the other side of fear. Ah! So, 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 practice, 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 practice ecstatic surrender as a kind of self-medication. That's been my approach to dealing with anxiety. <laughs>